I'm trying to make a cable that will better uh, uh, do what we need to do out in the uh, backyard here for antenna testing. First I'm going to do a, a, a cable that should work pretty well at uh, 2 meters uh, 220 and 432. I've taken this cable and cut it uh, to length by uh, putting the connector on this end and uh, trimming this end as you can see some of the trimmings here. I uh, just cut off with the dikes here, chopped off. Uh, and uh, I've set this up to sweep from, uh, looks like uh, 100 megs to uh, 500 megs. So that's what that is. I've got 1, 2, 3, which is 146, 222, 432. With the uh, normalization on, I've got uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and uh, very little loss. Uh, along that line. It's all about the same level. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I've got a T here. So this is the output from here through the uh, 10 dB pad and to the input here. And the suck outs on this cable will occur uh, at the quarter wavelength increments. I just put it on there. And there you go. You can see suck outs uh, all across this band. But the frequencies of interest here uh, one, three, uh, two, and three are uh, 0.2, uh, one minus point one, uh, one point seven eight. So they're they're at least in the half wave peak area of uh, of this um, cable. And uh, so now all I have to do is uh, take this in, this end of the cable and put a, a, a B and C on it. And it should give us fairly decent results uh, without the cable itself being uh, involved too much in the uh, measurement. So we'll give it a try and see what happens out there. Before going outside, I decided that uh, I should probably model this uh, circuit just to see what theoretically should happen. This is uh, RF Sim 99, a program that I got for free on the internet. You can get it at the site. Uh, shown on the screen and uh, they also tell you how to uh, load it onto more modern uh, machines than uh, my XP. Um, the, you, you'll have to check the, the website to find out uh, exactly how that's done. Anyway we've got on the left we've got the source which is the tracking generator, the first cable and the second cable and then the uh, spectrum analyzer on the right and the T is in the middle uh, where the test cable is coming off and I've got a hundred mega ohm load just because the program demands to have something there other than an open circuit so I just made it a hundred mega ohms to represent the uh, open circuit and this uh, will allow us to get an idea what we should see uh, for return loss and also for uh, uh, how much loss the cable is going to cause by resonances Let's take a look at the results of our circuit model here. As you can see here, we have a good return loss at uh, 144 megahertz. And uh, let's go up to 148. Still pretty good at 148. So we're in the uh, half wave area, certainly, for th this set of uh, frequencies. Let's go up to 220. There's 220 megahertz. Well, not so good, but uh, still close to the half wave area here. Uh, the loss is not going to hurt us at, uh, what is it here, maybe 3 dB. Um, and uh, But the standing wave is sort of high. so or return loss in this case. But at 222, which is actually the edge of the ham band, it's a little better. 2 dB. And at 224, 1.26 dB. So probably acceptable. Now let's go up to 432. Or 32 megahertz is right here. That's clearly uh, reasonable. 
or 40. Still reasonable, but starting to go off the edge. 450. Well, 450 is clearly uh, not in a good location here. We have a, a null. Now, remember, you're going to have this cable matched most of the time, but uh, or fairly well matched. Uh, and, but you still want to have it in the uh, multiple of a half wavelength uh, region. So that's uh, what we're attempting to do here. Just for grins, I uh, am comparing uh, directly the spectrum analyzer results with the uh, calculated results. And uh, there's pretty good correlation all the way through here, as you can see from the nulls. And uh, you can look directly at the four. Uh, 100 meg, uh, 432 meg data uh, on the upper right side here to get an idea how close these are. Pretty good. Here's my test setup for outdoors. I've got a sunscreen over the uh, spectrum analyzer, which is sitting on a chair. Easily done with this uh, lightweight uh, analyzer. I've run a cable out uh, to power it. I have my own chair to sit in there. And up here I've got the uh, table with the uh, vertical PVC pipe mounted on top. I've got the uh, antenna and uh, notice I have the boom between the antenna elements and the PVC to minimize interaction. Right now I've got the uh, coupler set up so that it's uh, open-ended here not connected to the antenna so I can go down now to the spectrum analyzer and set things up. As you can see I've uh, set up the spectrum analyzer. I've got it uh, normalized to 0 dBm which is what I've got the tracking generator set to and I've uh, put that down 5 dB from the top. Uh, I've used 30 kilohertz for the uh, bandwidth to get a reasonable um, compromise between the sweep speed and uh, having enough signal to noise ratio and our coupler is in the uh, not in the line so we have the uh, 0 dBm uh, at the top here which or that's actually 0 dB reference it's actually about minus 10 dBm uh, due to the uh, attenuator and well, actually about minus 30 because there's an attenuator in there and there's a 20 dB coupler in there, so, but we've normalized it to zero uh, dB. And um, so we're ready to make a measurement here. I just have to go plug it on. I've also set up the markers here for 420, 432, 440, and uh, 450. I've now screwed the uh, unit on to the antenna as you can see here I've uh, oriented the cables behind the boom and away from the antenna somewhat as you can see from the side here and so we should have a pretty good uh, uh, situation here as far as isolating the cable effects from the uh, antenna here's the uh, sweep I will also save that to show you the uh, higher resolution picture without the, any reflections in parallax here, but uh, that's the sweep as we have it now. As you can see, we have about uh, 17 dB at 420. At 432, we have about 22.5 dB return loss. 440, we have 15.7 dB return loss. And at 450, uh, we have 12 uh, dB of return loss. All respectable. Um, 12 dB is a little bit less than we'd like to see, maybe by a dB or so, but uh, all in all, respectable.